I wanted to start by telling you a bit about us and a bit about how we got into uh, remote work in the first place. And I wanted to start off uh, by saying uh, that uh, me, myself, uh, got into remote work uh, because I wanted to try that, like many of you did uh, said before. And uh, I wanted to try to see if that's something I would get into, that's some, uh, something uh, of a lifestyle that I wanted uh, uh, in the first place. So my personal experience was I started, uh, like Marco said, I started working with uh, uh, some of the websites even during studies, I uh, started working some freelance work. Then I worked for four years for uh, companies on premises here in Serbia. After that, uh, I decided to take on platforms. So I registered, I started working hard to, to get to some of the platforms and got my first client a uh, year and a half ago. Worked part-time at first and then I just figured, okay, what's the big deal? I can do this full-time and quit my day job, which I was balancing with the part-time at the time. And then I started working full-time and worked with various clients of various sizes. And uh, I think you're gonna find some of our experiences interesting and I'm looking forward to your questions to see what we can do to help you guys decide your future direction. Uh, I'm gonna let uh, Dusan start off and say a bit about himself and say about his experience at first in starting this. Uh, well, first I was working like standard nine to five for I think four or five years. And um, at one point, I was working for a local startup. Uh, we were doing fine until we weren't doing fine in the end. So we had, had to cut money for uh, like rent for the office or an apartment, not really an office. And we were like, okay, well, let's all try and work remotely for a while because we really need the funds, you know? And that's, that's what my first experience with remote working. I was not actually freelancing at, the, at that point. I was just like working full time uh, for a company, but working from home. Um, and I liked some aspects of it. I didn't like others. I didn't like how I was having trouble distinguishing work from life and stuff like that. But in the end, I managed to, uh, to find a perfect balance, which I think we'll talk about later. Uh, so af and after that, after the, the, the startup actually didn't make it in the end, uh, I started looking for more freelancing stuff because I really didn't want to go back to the office once I got my groove on working from home. Uh, so that's really how I started. Yeah, and you, Alexander? Yeah. Uh, well, guys, I had a similar story, like Milos and Marco said. Uh, when I was studying here in Belgrade, I was studying mathematical faculty here. Uh, I also applied to, to lots of jobs during, during free, uh, on the freelance com and similar platforms. Uh, but as Marco said, the uh, staffs there are li really hard, the competition is really hard, the prices are really low, and you need to like spend the almost all day working, uh, watching on these new jobs, watching on notifications, checking your email and stuff. So, but at, at that time, because I didn't have like a regular, um, how to say, um, payments or, or any kind of job, it was really okay. Uh, and I was able to like uh, working almost 16 hours per day, uh, had really decent salary. Uh, so for a start, that was really okay. Uh, after that, I got like uh, I was working for a couple of, of companies here in Belgrade, and then the moment why I decided to uh, switch to the like uh, how to say freelancing job was like my little daughter. I have like a two years uh, little daughter, and the other which, uh, the daughter which is al almost uh, here on the way, uh, and I wanted to spend more time with them. And also regarding like uh, other part of the story, uh, when you work from this, uh, works from nine to five, you know, you always stuck on some projects, working for like one project for like a year or a two, and you usually do some kind of bug fixing or something, and it's really hard to be like uh, team lead and uh, inside our job, uh, technology is like really traveling fast and you need to learn lots of new stuff. And uh, I was always like uh, following these new trends and stuff, but unfortunately you don't have the time to like, um, how to say, try these uh, new technologies on some kind of real project. You only like read about it and say, okay, I, I know that, but unfortunately I don't have any kind of experience. And for me, doing this freelance job is like, uh, that's the most uh, important benefit because usually you're working alone or in a team of developers for some kind of startup or a new project where you can like adapt and decide wha which, uh, what are the technologies that you are going to use. Uh, so you can try basically whatever you want, you know and uh, you can uh, have lots of experience and comparing to like my like let's say three or four years doing nine from nine from uh, five job 
to this freelancing job, I must say that for these last two years, I really improved my programming skills, you know, so that's really important stuff. Yeah, know. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you say were your fears when starting off as a remote developer, when cutting off ties with on-premises work and just moving yeah, to... Yeah, Milos, I, 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 all, uh, I mean, uh, I had really, like, really, really, really lots of doubts. You usually, uh, people say, you know, you can earn much more money doing freelance, but uh, the, the job is really unstable, so sometimes you d you're out of the project. Uh, there can be times where you're a couple of months out of the project. So uh, if you don't try it, you hear all of these different stuffs, uh, you know, some some say it's good, some say it's bad. You meet people that were doing freelance that they are now back uh, working from nine from nine from five. You know, so for me, uh, I really needed money because uh, how to say I, I got daughter daughter on the way and I was uh, okay. I, I need now more money. You know, I like that, like that's like some kind of uh, father figure. You know, <laughs> that was working inside me. Uh, and I was prepared to do whatever it's needed to, to get more money. So, but basically, I wanted to be cautious. So, uh, I took like a part-time job uh, with my regular nine-to-five job. So, I was do doing that for like example for like six months until I didn't decide it, it, it was like a time for me to do like uh, full-time free, free, uh, freelance. You know. So yeah. So, family is a big motivation for you then to yes, work remotely. Yes. yes in family contrast to yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm. <laughs> And you, Dusan? Um, well, the biggest yes. fear, the biggest fear, really was just finding uh, the finding the next project. So, I alleviated that at the, at the beginning uh, just by finding not really freelance projects, but really like a permanent job roles uh, that I could do remotely for foreign clients. Of course, it was technically freelance, but it was not uh, contractual. It was kind of you know. Uh, Un, un, as in, needed. In, yeah, as needed or indefinite. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's how I alleviated the, the biggest problem. And I figured that I could do that uh, with less than 40 hours a week. So I had some more time in the between. So that gave me, gave me freedom to look for other real like freelancing opportunities so I could pack up my work day, my work week. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it was, it was the, the money was, of course, the biggest fear. I didn't have... Uh, I wasn't afraid of, uh, I don't know, um, you know, just spending a whole day working or having n not working the whole week. I was welcoming it because if you, if you had some money to back it up, I was like, okay, I'll take the week off. I have no problems with that. So, yeah, basically the money, only the money was the, the biggest fear. <laughs> I will agree with you guys, actually. That was also my biggest fear when getting into, uh, uh, not the money per se, but uh, how do you transition after you finish your first project? Because one of my first projects that I took in was three months project, and I was uh, thinking about it. If I quit my day job, what will happen after three months? Will I be quick to find another job? Will I get a recommendation from the client? So I started working really hard when I quit the job to, to support uh, to support uh, my claim to another job after that. So yeah, that was also my biggest fear. And I'm guessing a lot, a lot of you are thinking about that other than the other things, thinking about after I found the job, I'm going to quit. Okay, I'm going to start working. And uh, then I'm going to get into trouble when I cannot find another job. But as Marco said, there's a lot of jobs. And if you're getting, uh, getting here to listen about remote, that probably means you're either good or uh, not good and thinking you're good. <laughs> so uh, if, if you're good, if you're good enough and you will only get better at time and as uh, you guys said you get better with with uh, remote work because you just basically got get a lot of time in your life that you will spend commuting that you will spend finishing administrative st stuff that you will spend after lunch uh, being uh, down with your performance uh, and waiting for it to pick up again at, at around three o'clock so uh, I, I also think that's a, that's a huge thing and huge benefit uh, okay, so uh, when we're in the nitty-gritty things here about your start, uh, what was your initial thinking about uh, the legal aspect as, and financial aspects of it? So now that you have a remote job and that you sign a contract or some sort of a, a legal thing with the client, uh, what was your idea? How will you handle that money? How will that money get to you? How, uh, how will that be in contrast to Republic of Serbia and their laws? What was your experience with that? Uh, well, I kind of was just winging it. You know, I signed up for one of those uh, online wallets which you can you know, like get paid through. 
um, I was thinking about starting up a company, but I had uh, my own, like, uh, my company when I started working, so I didn't want to deal so with like it. like an entrepreneurship. Yeah, like an entrepreneurship, yeah. yeah. So, but I didn't want to deal with it again because I really didn't like the bureaucratic stuff behind it, especially if you, when you're being paid uh, by the foreign entities. So I just uh, registered for Payoneer, and uh, whenever I have a talk with a client, I always ask them if it's a possibility, mm -hmm. because that's one of my probably the, the preferred. preferred preferred ways and probably the biggest clause. And if if they don't if they can do Payoneer, I kind of make them to, because it's <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. Um, so yeah, and that's where my worries ended because I think with with online services, I think it's pretty easy yeah to be honest I would agree with you Alexander what do you think uh, yeah I agree with you guys uh, I have like uh, I was doing that at, at, at first you know I, I was using Skrill because at the time uh, sorry not Pioneer the other uh, the big uh, no no mm, PayPal sorry PayPal was not able to deliver money yeah. to Serbia uh, but now I have my own company I must say from the legal side of the story it's really easy to like uh, open one uh, like uh, taxes that you need to the to, uh, to the government is not is not like uh, really high. You know that depends on the territory of the city that you live in or possibly yeah. other territory in the Serbia. Uh, but it's really not high to pay uh, such uh, prices. Uh, comparing that you have like free ca free health care, whatever that yeah. means in Serbia, and other benefits. Uh, if you have a daughter, uh, uh, government can pay. For example, for like uh, here in Belgrade, can pay like. Uh, for private kindergarten, uh, it, it can like uh, give you back some money and stuff like that. So it's really not bad to have your own uh, how to say company, you know. So yeah, I also started. Yeah, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you are using PayPal uh, or uh, Payoneer, yeah, uh, you're in actually in tax violation. Yeah, that's that's what I, yeah. I was so going with. Yeah, Thank well, you. I'll think about. I know, I know that's a, that's a very gray zone, but uh, we'll yep. think about it when it comes. Because I I hope that Republic of Serbia really r finds a way to regulate that. Absolutely. You know, because I don't like the idea that I have to be an entrepreneur to be able to work independently. You know, so I hope that they find a way, and if they don't, then I'll revert back to entrepreneurship because that's the, if that's the only way, then yeah. But as if it's that's basically the only way that's defined by law. I actually started off working with, with Pioneer too, and uh, I switched uh, to working as an entrepreneurship and uh, issuing invoices to clients and uh, charging them for, for my work. But uh, Pioneer makes it much more easier for them and makes it much more easier for you. So if that was regulated, for example, in Croatia, that's regulated and you can get taxes paid uh, on that sum that you earn and their taxes are kind of different than our yeah. yeah, but in our, uh, it's 47% or something w with all of the taxes. So you basically lose 47%. Yeah. Absolutely. You can vary from 100 to 300 euros depending on where you are in Serbia by paying taxes. And that's absolutely legal and regulated in Serbia. Uh, you have a tax that uh, that uh, Serbia determines uh, according to your place of uh, residence and according to the average salary and according to your discipline that you deal in. And uh, you just pay that tax and that's your obligation to Serbia that covers uh, uh, your health insurance uh, that covers your social insur insurance pension, etc. So that's that's the way to to go uh, now. If you don't want to think about the gray zones, but still, the yeah. gray zones aren't defined. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but you have an upper cap to how much you can earn up until you get to the added value tax. So that's a, that's a thing to consider. If you are a really good developer, you will eventually uh, go through that cap. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, but, but rega regarding... Yeah? Really? 
for uh, taxing you uh, like this, for taxing you monthly, that's a limit, not for added value. I, I, I agree with you. I, I don't know a lot about what happens when you uh, go through that cap uh, with the value added tax, but you cannot uh, be taxed as a person who pays a monthly fee of, yeah. Yeah, six and eight million. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Can I add one more thing? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Uh, well, I would just like to add one more thing. I mean, I always mix this netto and brutto paychecks that you get at the end of the month. But I need to say that, for example, uh, whatever money do, 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 did you get when you work from nine to five for some local company, that company is paying around sixty percent of that amount that they give you, additionally to like uh, taxes to Serbia. You know. So that's pretty much probably much uh, bigger that 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 you sh you should usually pay when you have your own company which Marcus um, which Milos said is it's between like 100 and maybe 250 um, dollars or euros per month you know yeah. so and you have the same benefits and basically uh, I mean if you decide to do the freelance that's that's something yeah I'm guessing most of you guys work like that so we won't uh, take up any more time with that uh, I just want to touch topic of your day to day. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about how you communicate with the other team? Can you do agile remotely? Can you do scrum remotely? Well, I guess yes and no. Uh, and I think that uh, if you're working freelancing or remotely, you, you have uh, much more dynamic teams that they wouldn't work really well with agile, I think. That's just my, my impression. So uh, how I do my daily stuff, how I communicate with other parts, parts of the team is just I communicate everything all the time, like complete transparency. If I'm not on my desk for next three hours, I just tell everyone I'm not at my desk for the next three hours. If I'm not working tomorrow, I tell everyone. If I'm out, for example, and I get a message about something, I'll reply immediately, okay, I'm out. I'll. Uh, get back with you whenever I'm possible. So like, I want everybody to just know the, the state that I'm in at the moment so that they don't have to wait for me at any given time because I know how difficult it is to have a remote team communicate with each other. And if you're always waiting for some email, wait, waiting for some message, I'm just trying to always be transparent, always be open, always notify whoever needs to be notified so that they don't have to wait for me. So they get my piece of information and they can move on. Um, and I think that's very important and it's, it kinda is m even more communicating than with your usual team. That's the thing. Because uh, you have to. You have to, you have to. You don't see people at their desk, you just cannot go there and ask them if you need something. You don't know if someone's not there or if someone is there on the other side. Even if they're all offline, on Slack or whatever, just shoot, I shoot them a message every time I just need to because I know when they see it, they'll deal with it so I can take my mind off it and I, I cannot say I was waiting for this guy to finish and he didn't reply for me. Like it's not, a, it's not a, an excuse for not finishing up your tasks. So I just like try to be as transparent as possible about absolutely everything. So a mixture between IM and video conferencing and audio conferencing a lot of the times and uh, basically hoping that the person that uh, needs to check out the message straight away stra checks it. Straight yeah, away, yeah, well, it's it's just, um, I think the com video conferences are just like more for really like meetings and whatever. Yeah, that's yeah, why I was asking with Scrum. Yeah, because yeah, Because some yeah. of the companies exactly. I worked for insisted on Scrum and they had a couple of guys remotely and it proven to be a tough thing to do, but it can be done and if done properly. So if you don't screen share to me the tickets, you just turn on the camera so I can see everybody because it makes me uh, appreciate, okay, that guy does that, that guy does that. That's much much more information for me when I need some help. And I, I don't think that daily it would work because if people's dynamics are mm -hmm. so different on daily basis, uh, sometimes you have to. That sometimes, yeah. Happen. Sometimes you have to. Like, uh, if you if you want to have weekly meetings, if you want to yeah. discuss new features or critical bugs or whatever, yeah, of course. Then you like schedule a meeting and people people show up. But I don't think it's very effective for a remote team to have a meeting every day in ten ten a.m. You know, because people want to maybe sleep in someday. Maybe they want to go out and do some chores in the bank or whatever. What? So. So I think the other tools really, like Slack, really helps with that, you know, so you can like, 
I mean, Slack is my personal favorite, but you mm. can use whatever you want. Uh, so just to have everyone notified about e e anything. So you, do, you don't have to like have a really personal connection with people. You can just like shoot your information into the ether and whoever needs to know will know. Thank you. So Alexander, same question. What do you think? Can Agile be done remotely? What's your personal preference with communication? Uh, What's your experiences? Well, that really depends on the client. You know, I usually work with the clients from the, which are US based, but I have lots of like uh, UA, UA clients. Uh, so regarding these US, cli US clients, their working time is when it's uh, like an evening here because that's the, 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 there is between like six and nine hour difference between the here and there. Uh, but we usually have like one uh, standard uh, meetup daily, you know, usually every client wants that. Uh, and after that we use like uh, other regular channels for communications, usually ch ch uh, chats like Jira, there is, uh, sorry, there is uh, hip chat that's Jira tool for chatting, Slack, or other similar to tools, you know. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you. I agree with you, Th those are my experiences too. Uh, basically, my experiences uh, with Scrum weren't that uh, uh, good in the sense that it can it, it can achieve something that uh, just a remote communication and and IM messaging can't. That's that's absolutely correct. I agree there. Uh, I uh, usually tend to pick jobs because I I'm at that point of my career when uh, I really try to pick jobs that are the best for me, not just taking on the job that was offered to me, even if the technologies interest me. Uh, if it's uh, no preference, it will uh, no preference means no preference for time zone. So you can work anytime. You can just uh, agree with the client of a daily or a weekly meeting. It just means you have a you have a job that you can do anytime but eight hours a day. Uh, I, I tend to choose those tasks now because those proved, uh, those clients uh, understand the remote way of thinking and understand the remote work. And those are some of my experiences. But well, do you want to add something? Yeah, yeah, well, I agree with that just because uh, even if works or projects say that they're remote friendly doesn't necessarily mean that they are. Yeah. So you have to like see and maybe even like give it a try m week or two with a project if, if it's working for you and if it's not, you can just like always cancel the contract, leave or whatever you wanna do. Uh, because if it's not working for you on a remote basis, it is basically the same thing if, if it's not working for you te on technology based. I mean, if, if you don't like technologies, you don't you will not take the job. But if you if it's not for you uh, personally for remote working, you also don't have to take it. And I urge you not to take it if if it not if it, if it doesn't work for you. Thank you, uh, Alexander. I'm gonna direct this question to you. So your work and life balance. You said you had a family. Do you prefer working nine to five or do you prefer working uh, no preference? Do you, do you have some sort of a schedule during the day? I was assume you do because of your... Uh, yes, I mean, there I cannot emphasize how like um, job from nine to five sucks when it comes to that, when you have like a little child because usually the little child is sick. Uh, you need to go to the hospital. There is always some urgent situation that you need to like uh, uh, do and basically this freelance job is like really made for that, you know, so I'm basically working from like my other room and my wife are <laughs> child in are in the uh, living room or somewhere, you know, or, uh, in the apartment and I'm always there, you know, so uh, that really like uh, when I was working from nine to five, I, or, I or really missed that, you know, I mean, I was not able to be there when I need to be there. Uh, and I almost, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking from that perspective now, but uh, I usually like arrange my working hours uh, when my child is in, in the kindergarten or, or in the evening when she sleeps. Uh, I would also like to add, for example, when you work uh, from the developer side of the story, you know, uh, when you work from nine to five, there are always lots of people, you're working almost uh, always in some kind of open space. And uh, I think that we as a developer have this kind of zone, you know, when you uh, when you get in, for example, when you work on some issue, you like just basically turn off a surrounding world, you know, and then work on this issue and you should be in that zone. There are lots of interesting uh, articles on the internet about that. You know, uh, but when you work from nine to five, there are always colleagues there that always interrupts that like zone that you are in, you know, but uh, when you do the freelancing stuff, uh, you can choose uh, the best uh, way to do it. So if I, for example, in the morning, I don't like, uh, I don't feel working, I will not do that. 
uh, and usually when I was coming f um, like uh, on jobs from nine to five, uh, I usually come to job and then spend eight hours doing nothing, you know, because I don't feel uh, doing anything. And then uh, when I come home, I'm still tired, even though I, I was not doing anything, you know. Uh, so when I am working as a freelance, uh, even if I work only two hours per day, I do much more than like uh, working eight hours on, on my regular job, you know, and that's the reason why I'm getting, I mean, <laughs> it's basically silly, but I think that's the reason why I'm getting better, you know, because I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really uh, uh, like put myself 100% uh, into the job, you know, so for the time that I'm working. Yeah, thank you. I want to add something to the question for you because you, you are uh, more oriented to the no preference. So do you prefer working from home or do you have some sort of uh, flip in your <laughs> mind? Okay, I want to go work from a coffee shop or okay, I want to go work from the beach. I want to go travel and work, etc. What are your yeah, motivations well, there? That, that, that was uh, one of the challenges I had when I started working because, you know, you have your home life and you have your work life. And when you start mixing those two, it either ends up not working at all or working too much. So, yes, and, and I really didn't like this, this uh, hard rule on me, like work from nine to five and then stop. And I, I just, you, if you have something that when you're in the zone, like you said, you cannot stop until you're done. And uh, so I decided to try and mix everything up. So. Um, not to separate anything, so like I don't go to coffee shops, I don't go to co-working spaces, I work exclusively from my home. Uh, but what I do is I mix my home life and my work completely. Is I don't have determined hours when I work, sometimes I work early mornings, just when I wake up the first thing I do sometimes I work, and sometimes I don't work until noon, sometimes I don't work until the evening, I'm just listening to my mood, how I feel about working. <laughs> And uh, it's, it's a thing, actually, you can l love your work if you, <laughs> if, you, if you set your mind to it. So uh, in, that, in that regard, uh, in no preference, I have no preference what my working, uh, working hours are, and, but I do have a hard preference. I like to work from home, definitely, because nothing can replace my couch or my bed or toilet, for that matter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. I, I, people say like that they like to be digital nomads. I'm a digital couch potato. <laughs> yeah, I'm a digital. <laughs> <laughs> not, not exactly a bad thing to be. No, so not yeah. at all. It's, <laughs> it, at all. For, for me, it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, when I first started, uh, I was comfortable with transitioning slowly. So I started working 9 to 5 like I did the, the day before. I quit my job and uh, uh, me and my friend got together and said, okay, we're starting this journey together. You are also starting freelancing work. Why don't we pick up a space and then uh, fix up everything, get the chairs we want, get the tables we want, invest something and, and create our own ambience. So we did that actually and this is how we currently are working. Uh, but uh, in time, I started to be more flexible. So basically nine to five began to be anything during the day and we started going in and out uh, when we needed to, when we felt like it. I started working from home like one or two days a week when, whenever I needed to. Started working from coffee shops even. There are a couple of coffee shops in Belgrade with is really decent internet that you can work like four, four hours a day. I cannot work the entire day from a coffee shop, but I can work like four hours a day and it's really pleasant. You can combine it with your lunch and you can combine it with, with socializing with other developers you have in, in your friend base, which is actually guides me to my next question. Uh, socializing when you're a remote developer. When, when you're on premises, you have like this uh, boiler room talk, like like talking next to a coffee machine. You're you're always speaking with somebody. You have these inside jokes with people. You have this team that you are not really ready to uh, leave uh, in contrast of uh, socializing. Uh, how do you handle that when you when you move to remote? Because you're not no longer in the presence of people around you if you're working from home, other than your family and your your closest ones. Well, you don't have to be in person with other people to socialize with them. You know, you can still chat. It's still the same jokes. And I mean, 
introverts here will understand how annoying people can be in person. So like, <laughs> if, you, if you can just stay away from them and tell your inside jokes over the text messaging, that's perfect. So you can, you can still socialize even if you're home all the time. Even if you're a couch potato. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I mean, you can always get your fix. Like always, you, that, that's the great thing. You can always get out. You don't, out of the, out of the house. If you don't want to work, if you want to socialize, you can always get out. Even if it's midday, you are not obliged to sit on the desk. You can just go out and meet through some friends who are also not working, who are like lazy bags, whatever. So it gives you this freedom to go and do whatever, but at the same time, you have your own non-violated space during yeah. the whole day. <laughs> Perfect. <It's> sacred. <laughs> <laughs> What, what would you say, Alexander, is your way of keeping up with your physical and mental health for, for that matter? Can but you what? Ask question yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you find some coffee shops with good internet where you know, people gather for freelancing? Because I didn't. I uh, I, I, a like couple of times I've seen. Uh, Aviator has pretty good internet. A couple of times I've seen people uh, that are, I presume, freelancing. They were on their Macs typing away, like zoned out. So I, I presume they were freelancing. So Aviator is one. I can. You you can try on TripAdvisor. There are a couple a couple of them. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. So. The, the question is, how do you, uh, sorry? Yeah, I want to uh, contribute to this. Be my guest. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's, actu that's actually how I prefer to work when I travel, because when I travel, you, you are using, usually uh, tied to the hotel's internet, which is almost never okay for you to work, or, or you are tied to that restaurant's internet, which is almost never good enough to work. So uh, what, what I was saying is there are a couple of places in Belgrade that have the decent internet that you can just uh, go get away from your home and just go for two or three hours and have lunch there or work a bit from there. But yeah, with data you can do whatever you want. You can go to, to secluded mountain and if you have the signal and you can work away. So sorry, uh, uh, life work balance. We were talking about your health. Do you, do you get some training done? Do you work on your body as well as your brain yeah. now that you're remotely? And how do you find time for it when you're uh, not in a constant uh, uh, like nine to five, nine to five, nine to five? Uh, yes, well, that's really hard. Uh, maybe you can see also, I mean, uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, yes, I mean, uh, usually I uh, there is like this lots of Facebook groups also where you can like join other people and, and go running. I like that, you know, and I was really doing that for like a couple of months before uh, my second child was on the way. I don't have the t time for that now. Um, but basically for the mental health, I like to play video games from time to time, you know. I mean, I'm not sure that's like exactly from <laughs> for that's positive exactly side or, or for <laughs> men of mental health, but you know, it, it affects mental health in some way, you know. So, uh, but yes, regarding like the physical issue, I think that's the same issue for all the developers, you know. But I think that working from 9 to 5 is even harder because you are, I mean, Lots of uh, companies here are uh, offering to pay some kind of, of uh, gym for you or something like yeah. that, uh, or other sport activities. But uh, you have like this fit pass now in Serbia, which is really cool, you know, which uh, is really cheap. And you have, I, I tried that for one month and it was, it, it's really working. I was also going to some bowling stuff, which is really like uh, not expensive when you have these cards. Uh, also, f uh, football of, uh, in the, um, how to say, in this closed space, I'm not sure mm -hmm. how it is, in balloon, you know, or whatever. Uh, so football. yeah, yeah. So that's those are the things that uh, I usually do to keep keep my like physical health and and for the mental health, I I don't know what to recommend. You know, that's really <laughs> video games are a good start. <laughs> Dusan, same question. Uh, yeah, I do a lot of video games, yeah, as well. Uh, and um, th that's that's where to just uh, to circle back to previous question. That's where a lot of my socializing comes because I play video games a lot with my friends. Um, so I don't have to go drink beer with people, I can play video games. Anyway, but yeah, physical health, uh, same. I try to uh, go at least once a week to do something like play basketball or football. Uh, I try, I, 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 I'm not saying I do it perfectly, but I try to run or ride a bike from time to time. 
Um, sometimes it's work out. It's working out. Sometimes it's not. But um, and like as I said, it's showing. Um, but it it could be worse. It's not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. To conclude, I would like just in one sentence, both of you, uh, your highest and uh, best thing about remote work that you encountered so far. So how would you sum it up in one sentence? What, why should they, the, the people who are thinking about moving to remote work, why should they move and, and do remote? Well, maybe I can answer that with a question for everybody else. Uh, do you want to stop being corporate slaves? <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. No, it's just that the freedom, freedom, freedom of, of, of life and uh, freedom to uh, have this daylight uh, time to myself to, so I can do stuff that I want, even if it's work, even if it's not work, I think it's just freedom. Alexander? Uh, well, it's really hard to fit this into one sentence, maybe a Try. big sentence, you know, long sentence. Uh, but uh, yes, I think that uh, personally, professionally, freedom, but mostly professionally stuffs are much better when you are doing freelance stuff. Uh, I know that the fear of, of like uh, these freelancing stuffs, I mean, you are ba basically when you are in the company, you are like a baby, everything is taken care for you, you know, you have like really uh, how to say safe environment, you know, some some kind of safe zone where you can come daily there and, and work or not work at all, you know. Uh, doing freelance is like fight, you know, it's it's not that much uh, different from, from like working from nine to five, but benefits are, you know, benefits are much better and I suggest that uh, all of you should like uh, try as much as possible to switch for uh, to that amount, of, I mean to that um, way of working, you know, so. I know, I mean, I was in your spot also. I was, uh, I, I, w I had lots of doubts. I, 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 I was not ready for that, but luckily to my friends here who persuaded me to do that and my like life situation that I told you, uh, I tried it and I, I don't think I will be able to, to go back to work from nine to five uh, unless it's really unnecessary to do so, you know, so sure. that's it. Thank you. Uh, I would conclude with you have a huge community of remote workers in Serbia. Uh, if you have any doubts whatsoever, there are also groups here that can help. There are groups for related to each of the platforms you heard about. There are groups for, uh, uh, they're related to co-working spaces. There are groups that are related to freelancing here. So uh, don't hesitate to use the power of community. That's my point. So whatever uh, doubt you have, you can hit up Every, everybody, uh, I haven't still met a freelancer who wasn't ready to at least share their experiences, if not uh, direct you in a good way, give you an advice, uh, give you a bad advice, which is all, sometimes uh, even better than giving somebody giving you a good advice because then you learn by yourself that something is bad. So uh, use the power of community. Thank you. I would open up the discussion to your questions and I wanna hear from you. I wanna hear your impressions and your uh, your general ideas and what you think we forgot about or didn't mention or didn't even think about. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody, really? <laughs> okay, I'll try. Yeah, so, um, I'm trying to figure out how to, to, to state the question. So, I was thinking about this. Okay, so, um, uh, especially the, the question for two of you guys that you're working from your home. So what actually drives you to, to perform your work? Because, uh, yeah, th that's really difficult to separate your personal uh, life uh, in your home from your work. And sometimes you don't feel like working and you can go be lazy and you can maybe have some of your, your um, savings so you can figure out, oh, okay, I don't need this project. Uh, this project can fail. I can always get another one. So. Is it discipline? Is it uh, maybe the passion for programming or is it uh, the sense of responsibility? So w what it is for you and for you? So I guess it's uh, different for everybody. So yeah. Uh, yeah, well, it's all of these things that you mentioned a bit, you know, so um, basically I have a separate room where I work on, you know, I mean, no one is entering that room because that's the deal, you know, between me and my wife, because that will influence a lot, I mean, so that's basically my room, room where I work, I, I transfer that room to the cancer, uh, to some kind of an office, you know, I have a whiteboard, I have like really nice 
monitor everything is cool, you know, for me, I mean, of course. Uh, but uh, basically, yes, I, I'm lazy. Like for like one week, I'm really lazy. I don't do anything or at least uh, I just show up on some kind of meetings, you know, and stuff. So I say that I did stuff. But then when I get, get to this <laughs> pressure that I need to do stuff, so I really sit down and do it. Uh, so, the yes, yes, but I mean, <laughs> pressure <laughs> is number one. <laughs> yes, Pre in this situation, pressure, you know, but basically, yes, I'm, I really work on really interesting project. Um, I mean, I will, I, uh, mostly like uh, related to Bluetooth devices, you know, so for example, you can, uh, how to say, control like wheel wheelchairs in, um, uh, using the Android um, phone, you know, and drive them, you know, so that's really interesting for me at least. And um, for example, the Bible project, we, which has like 200 and, uh, 250 million users, you know, really big project. So uh, all of this mix of technologies and, and, and stuff that I'm working is really drive me to, to uh, even do, do more and contribute, you know. Also along the way, I, I learn, all, I always, uh, every day I learn something new. So those are the stuff that like keep me pushing, going okay. on, you know, yeah. Well, for me, uh, there's little discipline. I have to admit, it's it's mostly passion, uh, and really, uh, it's it, usually it's products that drive me. So I really wanna connect with the the product that I'm working on, like Atza said. So I I want to see that product succeeds. I even if it's a boring piece of work or boring issue or a boring task, I have to I wanna do it just because I wanna see the product succeeds in the end. And uh, it's, it's one of the things how you select projects that you're working on. Yeah, I wanna work on something that I connect to personally. Something that I would use, something that I see that has a huge value for people in general. So that's my drive, just the product that I'm working on. So I mean this, when you are on a stable job, you are only s uh, stuck with this one project usually, you know, and you work on that for like a um, year or two, you know, so it, it, you, I, I really lose a passion about the project after, for example, six months up to the year, you know, I got tired of this project no matter what I work on. So switching project from like six years to a year, from six months to a year, it's really healthy for me, you know, I, I restore my passion and, and everything, you know, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, you basically just answered my question. The biggest problem for me was to commit to a long-term project. So, and I, it, it's, I think it's harder to find clients uh, sh for short-term projects. So, but you said you're switching uh, projects for six months, a year. That's how you work, or? I uh, absolutely agree with you. I switch projects like three to four months. That that's my preference. It's possible. I mean, yeah, it is fine, possible. Yeah. There's a lot of. Uh, what's your technology of choice? What well, I on? mostly worked on, worked on PHP, but I'm not yeah, so limited. Web I developer. Yeah, yeah. yeah so web, yes. web developers are <laughs> on the market as much as anybody else. So you, you will find jobs that are three to four months. I think they're, uh, the highest demand are uh, m uh, three to six months jobs, uh, at least in my experience in, in my platforms, because those are like uh, almost mid-scale projects uh, that will eventually need some sort of uh, mean. You get a, a further contract with that client uh, and uh, etc. But you you don't have to settle for a job that's two years in advance that, mm. that somebody yeah. said okay this is going to be in advance if you don't like it if you prefer switching places you can find the contract that's uh, half a year uh, okay. in length yeah. So, yeah. thanks anybody else so from my experience which is uh, almost three years I saw a lot of uh, extraordinary people, uh, very good developers and QAs and uh, experts in their area who were very um, close in their way of thinking, you know. They find themselves safe inside of the uh, company, you know, thinking that it's a safe place, you know, they don't uh, want to change anything, it's good for them, for them families or stuff like that. Atsa knows we were talking about it, <laughs> it took me a while to persuade him to <laughs> switch to freelance. Uh, but uh, in short, uh, people don't don't be scared. Mis uh, if you have a decent experience, uh, you're already overqualified for for freelancing, and uh, you have Absolutely. nothing to lose. Absolutely nothing to lose. Uh, e uh, I mean, 
good uh, companies are, are searching for, for experienced developers. Uh, so uh, at, at least you try. Spend a couple of months, fail. Try you know. with the part time. Yes, fail. Yeah. Uh, uh, f uh, what I did is, when I transferred to um, to TopTal, which is a platform not complete freelance, but it's very safe freelance. But I was not sure, but I I wanted to try. So I I had the luck to have a six months uh, of not paid uh, period. I could return, uh, but after a month, you know, it was clear to me that I don't want to return because uh, uh, it's so good, and. Um, few benefits, you already talked about some of them, but uh, one of the key benefits, at least for Serbia, is that you earn so much money in a couple of months. You don't have to work for six months after that, you know, so you don't have anything to lose. And, you know, just go and try. I think the best way to, to feel it out for yourself and to try and see there are plenty of clients that are looking for good developers. There are plenty of clients looking for bad developers. There are just plenty of clients. And their uh, developers are in demand and there's not enough developers in the world. So whatever, whatever that means to you, uh, let it mean. But try and if you fail, you at least try then you have that experience in your life. But I think the highest possibility is that you won't ever return to it uh, after a month, like colleagues said. Thank you. Anybody else? Or should we wrap up? Can I ask yeah. Uh, about deadlines. Mm -hmm. You have the project uh, about that is planned for six months. And uh, after six months, you see that you can finish this. Maybe you need four months more. What that in that case? There is a project that uh, are and the yeah I understand what what you're saying but that that's also an on-premises problem too you just have project managers you have project managers that deal with that problems in in remote world too but uh, I, I would say that you if you cannot complete the project in the time frame that is estimated that's something that's r more related to communication that than the remote work itself so you, you're signing on to a project and that's, that's a liability of that particular project, not, not something that's related to remote work, I would I, say. I want to extend to that question is maybe because he was asking what if you feel that you cannot perform the task that you yeah. requested. So I think that you just have to be transparent. Like, like I mentioned earlier, just tell the whoever's responsible that you cannot do it, that they should find someone else if they have some other work that may fit you better that you're willing to do so. If not, then you should just part ways. I don't think it's healthy that you maintain um, a business relationship where you cannot fulfill your end of the bargain. So just if you feel that you cannot do that, just get out of that immediately, come clean, and just be on honest, and people will respect that in the end. Yeah, thank you. Just want to add something uh, like uh, somebody mentioned platforms and mentioned the pilot top talent, etc. Usually it's a safe bet to start with platforms and on platforms you have this thing called trial period, which is both a trial for you and the client. So after that period of time, which can vary uh, in length, you can get a feel of can you complete the assignments? Is the client crazy for asking you to complete them in that time frame? And the client can see if you're good enough or bad enough or whatever they want from you. Uh, as a potential worker. So you have that safety net if that's something you're worried about at start before finding uh, your own client and, and finding your client outside of the realm of, of all of this we're speaking about. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. I think we have to wrap up. Um, so thanks a lot guys. It was really interesting. So can we have a round of applause for our panelists?